Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 27 of Omni Factory. My name is ZD Sauce, and I made some walls. I, uh, I really like how these look, and I'm super glad I decided to actually do it. Um, obviously, it's not completely filled out, and I still need to move a good amount of stuff, but things just already feel more organized. I mean, ignore this mess of, of things right here. It's, it's an ongoing process, but I, I moved my drawers to, this, uh, to the corner a bit, and how I have it set up is I have the um, the drawer controller in the center here, and then, whoa, that was a weird glitch. And then I have my ender chest um, just below it, pulling out. I don't need to connect it there. Um, so the ender chest is doing the same thing that it was doing before, and it's just putting it into the drawers. And then um, this is connected up the same way. And I think I'm gonna try to make some, some type of conduit facades. I think those are a thing. And I'm hoping the connected textures work well with that, but we will see. Um, but if we can't get that, it is not the end of the world. And maybe we'll put something in this corner anyway to cover it up. Um, I also added in travel anchors to the different spots around my base. So it's just a bit easier to uh, get around. And I've also been just uh, blast furnishing up a bunch of stuff to prepare for HV machinery. Um, so I just have been kind of monitoring this, but stuff like stainless steel takes a super long time to make. So I just left Minecraft running for like three hours last night when I was doing something else. and. I got a whole lot of stainless steel, um, and and this is just comes from the dust, which it, it's a bit hard to get. We need chrome and manganese. Manganese, I just ended up buying. Um, I just bought some pyroluce, or no, I bought. Uh, there's just manganese ore, I think, or no, maybe it was pyrolusite, um, and then I just smelted it up. Yeah, and then I uh, macerated up the manganese. So I got like a stack of manganese, and then you get chrome from pulverizing rubies. So I was able to get a good amount of that stuff and just let it go. Now I'm making more of these, uh, that word, and uh, so I can get more wafers uh, for circuits and other stuff. And uh, then I just have more stuff kind of lining up to go. So I've been slowly monitoring this. And since we only have one blast furnace, I've just been doing things passively, but we're definitely gonna wanna get more, uh, more blast furnaces shortly in the future because this thing is a, uh, it's definitely very slow, and it is very limited in the things that it can make. Um, yeah, I think that kind of does it for what I changed in between episodes. Um, I have some big plans for uh, what I want to do this episode. Um, I want to get into alloy automation, and, and as well as the automation of a few other things. So I'm planning on going back to my overworld base and kind of trying to set up another line of automation um, that, that basically just uses up all of the automatic resource that's resources that we're getting from deep mob learning. So I've gone through and bookmarked a good amount of stuff. Um, so these are all made in alloy smelters. Uh, so a couple things that I'm going to need to do is, is one, I'm going to need to make a ton of alloy smelters because I basically want to have a dedicated machine for each of these. And then I also want to... Uh, I'm going to need to set up limited item filters on all of these. I was exploring the possibility of making robot arms and in doing it that way, but it doesn't really work with item conduits. So I think uh, limited item filters are going to be the way to go. So I'm going to need 12 of each. So for an alloy smelter, I don't have any right now, but that means and I'm, I'm also going to do this all with uh, basic machines. Uh, what am I looking for? Uh, LV machine holes. So I'm going to need 12 of these. Hopefully I have enough resources. Looks like we're missing some tin cables. Actually, I'm gonna teach this thing how to uh, make tin cables. That's just a crafting recipe, right? And I think it already knows how to make tin wire, I believe. The machine holes. Cool, so we're gonna use these to make our 12 alloy smelters, and it looks like it has a good amount of stuff to make, so I can probably cut in between that. But I also made this uh, this CEF, and this is the one that takes, it, it has to connect to uh, the 16 times wire, just because we're gonna have so many machines hooked up to this one. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna set that up, and then, yeah, we're just gonna to make 12 limited item filters, which I think I should have enough stuff for. I made a bunch of solarium, and actually, I wanna, before I use this, I wanna complete the quest. I think there's a quest. Yeah. Get some more coins. Um, and then I made up a good amount more wafers. So if I look for a limited item filter, we're gonna need to get a bunch of these zoologic controllers, which, so I guess we'll need 12 of these. Do we have enough? Yes, we do, nice. And now, sweet, we got 12. 
And then I already made the comparators, so. Oh wait, we need to make these first. And now we should be able to get the actual limited item filters. So yeah, these are expensive, but I, I really don't see a simpler way to do it. And in the long run, it's really, it's not too many resources. I'm not gonna get too upset about it. Um, okay, so uh, what's next is we basically need to make a bunch of wiring and then also those alloy smelters. So this is still make, working on making a bunch of machine casings. Um, so I'll, I'll make the 12 alloy smelters because it's not gonna be super fun to watch me do that. Um, and then I'll be back when we're set up and in the overworld. All right, I think I'm ready. Um, if I'm forgetting anything, I'm sure we will find out, but we are going to head over here, back to the overworld. We can also see how everything is, uh, is going. Uh, just got a message on my recording, like encoding overloaded. Things looking okay. If they're not, they're not. I mean, anyway, oof, they're really laggy. Um, yeah, I feel like that got worse. Well, we're about to make it laggier with a bunch more machines that are going to be, uh, that are going to be going on. Um, <laughs> but, oh yeah, we are doing mighty fine on pulsating polymer clay. So I'm going to actually have to be hooking into this electric furnace because we're going to be wanting to basically use some of the resonating dust that we're making. Um, so I feel pretty okay doing that. Um, we're back stuffing a lot on these, so I think, uh, we're not going to have any issues with this pulsating polymer clay. And if we do... I mean, it's going to take a while until we actually encounter those issues. But yeah, I think things are looking pretty good. So uh, I'm going to need to do a few things. And uh, one is to basically set up our line of machine. I think of where I want to put that. I guess I'll just, I think I'll set it up here. That, that seems like a good place, right? So if I put my CEF like right there and then line up my cabling. Yeah, that, that feels good to me. Um, perfect. And now we'll just need to bring some wire over here, which I think it'll just be easiest if I... It's not gonna look pretty no matter what I do. Hey, this this place is not for the, uh, the looks. It's for the production, the efficiency. Oh yeah, beautiful. I don't know why I had to do the zigzag there. That's gonna bother me, I'm gonna... <laughs> Even if I'm never here, it's gonna bother me. Cool, so we got power here, and now we basically just want to line up a bunch of alloy smelters. So I think I'll, I'll just do three on each, and then we can we should be able to just um, hook in uh, hook in item conduits, however we however we wish. Um, yeah, this should be fine. If the output is by default on the back, I think that's all right. Yeah, we are set up for production. And then we're also going to need a macerator and I'm probably going to end up, Oh, I forgot. We're going to need an electric furnace as well. Cause I want to make wrought iron, but I can, uh, I can get that a little bit later. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. So now basically we are going to want to hook into this item line and it's going to be also inserting on green and probably with a round Robin en enabled, I think is the best. Although we're going to have to go in here and round Robin everything. Ooh, we might have to do that. Um, and then we're basically going to want to set up our limited item filters. And I think that should be pretty much all we have to do. So to make all these different alloys, they're going to have to take different ingredients. And we want to limit, uh, we, we're setting up limited item filters because we don't want, uh, like here you would have, I don't, I don't want to get two stacks of redstone by accident in the alloy smelter. Um, so yeah, before we connect everything up, we should definitely set up our conduits first. So we can do that on both sides. And I guess we're not really gonna need, uh, oops, can get rid of all these connections because we only need one side. Make it look a bit nicer. And again, apologies for the lag, but this is why we moved to the void base. So this is reassurance that I did the right thing. Um, all right, so these are all gonna be inserting on green. Um, we can just set up a few for now, uh, just to get the gist. Uh, so I guess for the first one, we can just go right in order. So this one will be the red alloy ingots. So that's going to take copper. And we'll put that up to a stack. And it's going to take redstone. So now the only thing it should allow into this alloy smelter is a stack of copper and a stack of redstone and no more than that. Um, 
So yeah, basically I'm gonna go through this list of alloys and um, I'm gonna have to set them all up essentially. Uh, something else I can do I guess, before I go is we're also gonna need to set up this macerator. So I, I'm having this macerator because I want it to, oops, that's not the macerator. Um, I, I want to input coal into here. So I guess that will just need a regular item filter though. Um, so I'll, I'll make one of those. But yeah, I'll spend some time uh, just, just going through all these different recipes and setting up the different alloy smelts. And then when I come back, we can connect everything up and hopefully it, it will be done right or else we could have a messy situation. Uh, so I'll be back when this is ready to go. Okay, and I'm back. So I, th I think I'm all set. I, I did realize a few things when I was setting this up though. Um, one is that soldering alloy, I can't really automate here because that actually takes antimony, which is not something that I am producing for free. Um, so that's that's one I didn't set up. Um, there are also a few I haven't set up yet, but I want to in the future. Um, one is dark steel. Um, we can't quite do that though, because we need to automate either obsidian or void crystals. I'm thinking I want to try to automate void crystals because um, that's just coal, but we need to figure out some kind of nifty way to automate this atomic reconstructor. And then I actually I've actually bookmarked everything else I want to automate with that. Um, we'll see if we get that if we get to that on this episode. Um, but that's kind of a, a a bit of a separate effort that that will take to actually automate that. But we use dark steel enough, so that's important. And then electrical steel would be nice to automate as well. But we need silicon. Um, but this is pretty easy to automate because it's just clay, which um, as as we found with the polymer clay setup, it's very easy to automate clay. Um, it's just with a couple of macerators, so I could just kind of extend what we have set up here fairly easily and get that going. But again, uh, I want to make sure this is working first and then we'll see. Um, this chest, what this chest is doing here is it's actually a small wooden chest, which is from Greg Tech, and it holds only one type of item. And the only thing I want this to hold is uh, the pulsating dust, um, just so that we don't need to have I mean, we, we could also just insert pulsating dust directly into the side here, but then we need two limited item filters. So this is my way to get around that because it will just insert on the same color, which is gray of the pulsating dust over there and then um, extract on green. And then everything else is getting inserted on green with the various limited item filters. And yeah, the only I'm making sure the only things that are actually hooked up are things that do have these filters on them. So we're not going to be getting random items. Um, and then on here, yeah, so we have filter for the uh, the regular electric furnace, which will just take an iron to make wrought iron and the macerator will take in coal to get coal dust. And then, um, yeah, I think, I think, I think we're all set. And if we're not, it's going to be sad. Um, but yeah, I guess we can, we can hook things up for now. Let me just bring this cable over here. Um, what's the best way to do this? I guess this is on a separate line, right? Oh yeah. That's another reason I did this. Um, so this, this item conduit line is actually coming from our actual processes. And that's why I'm able to hook up. I, sh well, I guess I should be able to hook up uh, the pulsating dust directly to it. And so actually I, I want to make sure that this is not connected. So if I do that, so let's test out this first and make sure we don't connect any lines automatic or by mistake. So this should be getting in. Oh, Oh, you know what? Ugh, I meant to do this. I don't know why I didn't, I didn't think of it. I need to uh, put an item filter on this. I, I had that train of thought, but I just didn't think of it. Uh, let me run back to my void base really quick and get an item filter. Okay, we are back. So let's try that again. <laughs> um, so if we put an item filter in here and say, okay, you're only getting pulsating dust because I forgot that uh, clay comes into the same color because we need both those colors to make the... Um, the polymer clay, obviously. And now I want to make sure these don't connect again, because I don't want whatever green stuff is over there getting inserted. I mean, it probably would be fine, but better to keep these separate. Okay. Let's try again. And this should be slow because we're only generating pulsating dust every once in a while, but we should see pulsating dust pop up in here and then it should get extracted out and thrown into here. Cause this is my, uh, pulsating ingot round robin or my pulsating ingot alloy furnace. I'm saying round robin because I'm thinking of round robins. Is this, 
This should be extracting on gray with round robin enabled. And that should be able to make its way over here, right? Yep, we got item conduits. Are we seeing? Awesome, cool. We got some pulsating dust in here. And just to jumpstart it a bit, I will add in a bit more. <laughs> Actually, I, I want I want a few of those um, in case my cakes run out. But I have, I have more on my base. And then the other thing it should be getting on green is just iron, which once we hook up to here, that should be fine. And I also, I went underneath here and I, it was annoying to do, but I, I, I set up round robin enabled on all of these extracts. So we should like be getting half of them going into, um, into our actual ender chest over here. And then the other half should be getting distributed around uh, our, our furnaces. And if things are going too slow, I can also like grab some iron can I get out of here, please? There we go. And and uh, boot start it. Is that a word? Boot start? I'm not sure. Um, but okay, I'm scared to do this. Oh wait, I also wanted to connect these up. And let's just remove any unnecessary connections so that we know what we're doing. Um, yeah. Okay. Moment of truth. Oops, that's the wrong one. I'm so scared that everything's gonna go awry. But we should be seeing things, because I set up round robin, we should be seeing things get extracted from these loot fabricators like iron, for example. But I guess iron is used in a lot of these alloy smelter recipes. So I'm not really sure how things are prioritized. Look at that. Okay, so we already got tin and it's not getting more. So limited item filter is doing well. Looks like iron is our big back stuff. Okay, gold and silver, that's working well, cool. So we are getting electrum as expected. Um, cool, we're getting some of our pulsating iron. Some iron in here as well. What's this one for? Oh, we need a redstone. But yeah, I'm hoping that eventually this stuff is going to uh, fill up pretty quickly and then I'm, I'm just gonna try to fill up like maybe 512 of each of these cool we're already getting a good amount of coal dust and i'm gonna want this coal dust to get extracted and thrown into here so this is actually gonna extract on green as well we can do that and that should go right in here because that shouldn't have anywhere else to go cool and this should be getting iron as well eventually and yeah i think i think we're good um, I'm trying to think of a way I can like speed this up at all. <laughs> uh, I, I might just remove the, yeah, I'm going to remove the iron filter from here for a second, just so that no more iron goes into our chest and that all the iron that our zombie thing is making goes in there correctly. But yeah, I think this should be good. Um, let me just like give it a sec to run and make sure we're, we're making alloys as we expect. And I'll, I'll be back and let you know if anything goes wrong. All right, I'm gonna do what's called a pro gamer move and just kind of let this, <laughs> give, give, it, give it a little uh, starting boost of iron and redstone. Um, so this is just extracting on green. So it's just like it would be coming from over here. Um, oh, wait. Wait, wait. Where was that going? Was it just going in here? How is that working? Hmm, wait, I think I messed something up. What's getting inserted on green? There it is. <laughs> oh no, I thought I had it all figured out. Okay, that gets extracted on brown. All right, yeah, yeah, give me my stuff back. Is that everything? Wait, what's getting a, what's inserting on brown? This is, there we go. Give me my iron dust back. Oops. Wait, this is also, is anything else getting inserted on brown? So it's not blocking anything. A lot of stuff's getting inserted on brown. Okay, I think that's better. Right when that started going away, I was like, wait a second, what's happening here? Okay, let's just move the chest to somewhere else. My bad. Okay, if the chest goes here, that's what we want, right? Uh, okay, this is gonna extract, always active on green. 
Now, let's do what we wanted to do. So I'll throw in some redstone and iron, just because those are the th main things we're backed up on. So yeah, now this is getting a bunch more redstone, so we should be building up red alloys. I guess copper is also being a bit slow. Um, that's something I can get later, though. Tin alloy is doing well. We got electrum. Electrum's fine. What's the other fun What's the other thing for this? Oh, nickel. Yeah, nickel's going to be very slow. This is also nickel, I'd assume. Um, but that that's okay. The, the nickel alloys aren't something that's super important. Um, nickel isn't used that much anyway for anything. Okay, cool. So this all looks this all looks pretty good to me. Um, so I think all that's really left to do is to actually import this into our system. So actually, oh, I need to check this as well. So this is coal, and this takes in wrought iron as well, right? Okay. So we're getting wrought iron here. I guess all we have to do is just also extract this on green, and that should not go anywhere. It isn't supposed to go, I would hope. Cool, and now we have automatic steel production as well. Um, cool, so yeah, what I wanna do is basically just set up another ender chest kinda like this, and I'm gonna have to surround it with limited item filters, and then I'll put some storage doors uh, back on my normal base, and I think that should work fine. I really don't see why it wouldn't. Um, so yeah, and then I think you can also just insert on green, and I, I think that should be fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Okay, um, so yeah, I, I mean, you saw me do that a few episodes ago, so I'm not going to walk you through that again, but essentially I have another ender chest, so I'm going to throw that down. This is the one I currently have, but um, what's my diamond color? It's, it's one in the middle, right? Oh, also, my diamond production is crushing it, by the way. Um, so if I do one on here, that should be empty. And then I'll, I'll put the ender test with blue on my base as well and should be able to import things up like that. But yeah, so I'm just going to do the same thing I did with this. And that is just setting up limited item filters with stacks of what we're producing. And I'll be back when that is all set up. Okay. So the filters are set up. I basically just went through and, and set up the filters for every item that we're producing. I'm, I'm including the coal dust and uh, wrought iron because those are useful outside of alloy smelting. I mean, especially wrought iron, we use that all the time. Um, so I, I want to make sure those are also going to be in the ender chest and into our storage system, as well as they're being used for the other crafts. So pretty much everything in here is just inserting and extracting on green, but the green color is okay to use because everything that's using green has filters on it. So like these are all extracting on green normally, but they're not going anywhere. Um, because there's no green insert that doesn't have a filter that will accept the items. So everything is just back stuffed right now. I also brought over some nickel and copper and other stuff to make sure everything's getting filled up as expected. Um, but yeah, so I, I set up the filters over here and I had to use two because we, we need, we had 11 in total so far, but that's gonna, we're gonna get more soon. Um, but yeah, if we just change these to insert now, um, we should get it steel in here and that should only get up to a stack. And then if we also do insert here, we should have the same thing. And these are all connected to the same line. Um, yeah, and this is just a different ender chest because we are pretty much out of slots in here. Um, I think the limited item filters fill up 26 slots in total. And um, that extra slot, in case everything else ends up backstuffing, that extra slot was needed to basically pipe in the extraterrestrial matter, uh, hellish matter, and overworld and matter. But sweet, yeah, we are seeing our different types of ingots show up here, and now these should be continuing to smelt and grab items and do all the things. This is exactly what we want to see. Um, so yeah, that is the ender chest with a blue on the left. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. So now what I want to do is head back to our void base and hook this into our power system. Or not our power system, our storage system. Um, so we have some drawers here. We're going to need to make a few more. And I th I'm thinking what I want to do is just, I guess I can probably just set up the, uh, like how I have the ender chest down below here. I can just set one up above as well. I don't really see why not. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. Um, so I guess I don't actually need to do that. So if I take down my ender chest and put it here, this should be my, um, my, my first one. Are we back stuff on emeralds? We are. That's awesome. Um, but if I make this into my blue chest, yep, now we're seeing our alloys. So we want to do the same thing and pretty much just import that directly in, but it shouldn't go anywhere because we have no blank drawers as of right now. So 
So this is going to insert on green and this should extract always active, but nothing's going anywhere. Correct. Awesome. Um, now, is there anything I want like half a, like a, a thousand of, I'm, I'm thinking I might do steel and wrought iron in a one by two drawer. Let's see what kind of drawers I, I have going on. Yeah, we got some one by twos. We're going to need some of these. Let me make a few more. And I'm going to need my drawer key as well. Cause I don't think these lock automatically. I don't want to, I don't want to have any risks. So let me make sure. Okay. These are already locked. Looks like they are all locked. That's good. Okay. Um, if I take these, it's my lumber axe. Oh, it's literally on me. Okay. So if I set up my stuff like this, where should I put this? Okay. I'm going to try putting this here and yeah, that shouldn't get anything because it is locked on what it currently is. So if I take my steel and my wrought iron, I should be able to throw that in here and yeah, they should start populating and they'll be going for a while until, until things are completely full. Cool. That looks great. Um, and then I think for the rest of the ingots or at least the ones I have right now, I think just doing a four by four chest is totally fine. Um, so let me put them over here, I guess. One right there, one right there. That might be enough for what we need right now. Um, so we got bronze, conductive iron, pulsating iron, cooper nickel. Do, do. That's four. And then we'll need a place for coal dust as well, I guess. Um, I guess the order doesn't really matter. I'll do my iron stuff in one. I guess that's all of them. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter too much. I'm overthinking it. Okay. Cooper nickel can go here as well as our tin alloy, electrum and in bar. And yeah, so these should all start building up now until they get to 512 and then they should back stuff. And I should have access to everything pretty much. I would assume, right? Like pulsating iron. Ooh, I do have more. So actually I'm going to go through and like make sure this is all going to the right place. Okay, it is cool. Um, but yeah, that's looking good to me. Did I miss out on anything? I guess coal dust. Um, yeah, we don't. We're not going to need too much of that, and that's pretty quick. Um, I can set up another four by four and then kind of fill it up as we go. So we'll take the coal dust here, and put that there. So yeah, we should get five hundred twelve coal dust on hand at all times as well. So I think coal dust is used for like a few different things. Um, but yeah, this is looking great and it's extracting. It seems like it's extracting pretty much everything. Um, right. I guess it's kind of doing it randomly, but I'm assuming it should, it should backstep pretty quickly. These are, these are filling up quickly, but yeah, that is, that is looking pretty good to me. Um, I'm going to spend some time and make sure everything's in my drawers instead of, uh, in, instead of my uh, ME drives, actually. And and then, yeah, I think I think we should have time to maybe do a few more things. So I'll, I'll figure out what I'm going to do and be back. Okay, uh, on second thought, I think I'm actually going to end things off here. Um, I mean, this is filling up really fast. It's really, it's really good to see, and, and I'm glad I got all this done. Um, so we should, yeah, end up with about 1,000 steel and wrought iron, and then 512 of all the other various ingots. So I, I, I should really never have to worry about crafting these again. They should just be passively be filled. And uh, it's definitely definitely a good feeling. Um, I also decided to throw in uh, the, what is this? I always forget the name of this, the, the pulsating dust. And I actually want to set up the filter for that. Um, just, just because it is something that's used in a few different recipes. And if anything else, it's just good to have the void worlds. So it, it'd be nice to have a bit uh, on like on demand there. And yeah, we're, we're doing good here. Um, at least as far as I can tell, if we have issues, we have issues, but so this is already extracting on green, some of the pulsating dust. So what I want to do is just add this to the limited item filter, which I can do here. And now, yeah, this should also start inserting pulsating dust, um, which is pretty nice. 
but yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode. I'm pretty happy with how things are. Um, actually, I also want to, uh, I can do that after I finish, actually. I don't want to forget to uh, keep on putting in, I, I took out the iron, copper, and redstone so that things could get put in here a little bit quicker. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. I, I'm pretty happy with this build. I, I think it's, it's really messy. We kind of got wire going everywhere, but this isn't like it's our main base or anything, so I'm not like too worried about it, really. But uh, yeah, we're making a bunch of alloys. We're storing those alloys. Things are looking good. Uh, but yeah, so thank you very much for tuning in, and I will see you on the next one.